What's up everybody? This is Jurgen the Badass Homesteader and I wanted to go over things that you should be thinking about in your bee yard in January. So if you have not ordered your bees yet, you better get on it. Most bee suppliers will be sold out by the end of the month. So get on top of that right now. The next thing I would be thinking about is joining your local bee club. There is a wealth of knowledge and there's a lot of individuals that can help you out. Even if this is your fifth year, first year, it doesn't matter. There's gonna be somebody that most likely will be able to answer your questions. If this is your first year in getting into beekeeping, one other thing I would check is just your local restrictions or regulations. You're starting to see some states, for good or for bad, uh, I'm not gonna comment on that, but like New Jersey, they're gonna start prohibiting individuals from having beehives. They have certain requirements before you're allowed to. So one of the things that they're looking at is a quarter acre uh, or less is gonna be prohibited from having hives. So that's gonna get rid of individuals that were keeping bees on rooftops in cities, unfortunately. Um, they're gonna have a num they're gonna have restrictions on the number of hives that you can have in your yard. There's pros and cons to that. I, I do think sometimes individuals are a little too dense with their bees. Even myself, I have sometimes 10 hives in this yard, and even I think that's a little dense. That's not very natural. I mean, in the wilderness, the bees wouldn't cluster this close together. So there's, there's pros and cons. Um, the other thing that New Jersey is looking into doing is flyaway barriers, so that, in essence, that flight path as those girls leave that hive isn't going to disturb their neighbors. It's not a bad thing. Uh, myself here, I have the girls on a slope. So as they fly up, they're gaining in elevation really fast and they're not disturbing anyone, especially when I'm mowing the yard or walking around. Another thing that New Jersey is looking into doing is doing continuing education for their beekeepers. I don't think that's a bad thing either. Um, we all need to learn. Now, one could say, oh, I'm, I'm very experienced and there could be something to be said about that. But there's new things going on with bees every single year. So I don't necessarily see continuing education as a bad thing. I know some states, they even require that you mentor with a beekeeper for a year before you even have a hive. I think that's great. It's kind of what I did my first year. I got into beekeeping late and by the time I was interested in bees, I couldn't order bees. I missed that opportunity. So that whole first year, I couldn't be a beekeeper. So I mentored with individuals and I just learned little things. And then when I could order bees, I ordered bees. So it's not a bad thing if you're thinking about being a beekeeper. I mean, geez, mentoring is free. Every one of these hives can cost you four to $600. You don't have that expense. You could just be helping someone out, learning a lot of things and really get into the hobby. And, and, and truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those mentors even just threw you a nook or something. So, I mean, it's a win-win situation. So what to do in January as a beekeeper? Just monitor your hives. Make sure the winter winds haven't disturbed um, your girls. Make sure their op openings are clean of snow so that the bees can get out for a cleansing flight. If you know one of your hives is dead, I would recommend to lock it down. Just in case that hive died because of mites, if robbers come in, those mites are gonna uh, hitchhike a ride on those bees and then it's just gonna turn into a mite bomb. So if you just lock it down for a couple days, those mites will die. Um, you're welcome to open up the hive again. If you know that that hive had no other issues, um, if you had American fowl brood, that would be a different story and a, and a much bigger issue. But I would crack open to that dead hive, just make sure there isn't anything else alarm alarming before you let other girls rob that hive out. In January, the bees are in a tight cluster. They're trying to stay warm and consuming very little food uh, early in the month. On days when the wind is calm and the temperature is nice, I would probably go out and just check on your bees. You're probably gonna see a few of them flying around taking some cleansing flights. And since bees do not go to the bathroom inside their hives, that's why they need to be able to fly out on these warm days. When bees die during the winter, they typically fall to the bottom of the hive. In the summer, when the bees die, they're immediately carried out by their sisters. But in the winter, when the hive is clustered, you'll see dead bees just accum accumulating on that bottom board. On a warm day, other bees might drag out their dead sisters, but if snow's covering the ground, you might notice more dead bees are just around the hive. And this is normal. I wouldn't be too concerned and I wouldn't really panic. So everybody, this is Jurgen the Badass Homesteader. That's things that you need to be thinking about in January as a beekeeper. Have a good one, everybody. Peace.